One of the things I love the most about riding through rural Appalachia is looking at the old barns and homesteads sitting quietly in the shadows of the mountains. Especially when I run across an old cabin from the 1800s. I always ponder the history and I wonder what stories the walls could tell. Sometimes I'll even pull into the gravel or dirt driveway to get a closer look. I'm always curious to know who is the keeper of these cabins. Who's the one protecting them from disappearing and being lost forever to the hands of time. And sometimes I get lucky enough to sit down for a long chat with the owner of the cabins. Well, today was one of those days and I got to learn the incredible story of two cabins with two separate histories. One was once a homestead for a family of 13 who worked the fields in these mountains. And the other was built by Indians back in 1818 when East Tennessee was still controlled by Native Americans. Today. I'm so, glad to tell the story. So this cabin we're standing in here, how, how did it get here? Okay, well, my dad, uh, Bob Ray, was a, a highway patrolman here in this county. Uh, and in the late 1970s, um, he heard about this cabin. It was in West Hamblin County, uh, the west of Morristown. And um, the story is, is that uh, the property where this cabin stood was sold. And the new owners had no connection to this old cabin, which was behind the, the farmhouse, the, uh, the new house, and had been deserted for years. The new people having no connection to the cabin just wanted to get rid of it. They were gonna burn it or bury it. Uh, my dad heard about it and said, uh, listen, I would love to have a cabin. I'll get it off your hands. You won't have to do anything. And they said, fine. So dad dismantled this cabin uh, we took these logs and stored them where I grew up, which was about three miles up the road here, in a barn. These logs just sat for 30 years. Uh, and one day, uh, about 10 years ago, my dad, who was getting older, we were coming up the driveway there, and he said, Rob, said, I'd like to put that old cabin up. I'm getting older. I'd like to see that put back together. I said, well, let's just do it. We don't know, we, we don't know who originally built it. Uh, we think that it goes back to the 1850s. The fellow that helped us uh, put it back together knew a lot about these old cabins and based on, I don't know, the dovetailing and the type of, I don't know, he thought it went back to the 1850s. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know who built it, but we do know this old couple right up here in that picture above the fireplace, mm -hmm. those folks lived in this cabin around the, night, the turn of the century, the early 1900s. Okay. I've got a picture somewhere of those two old folks and their entire family, which consisted of 13 people. 13 folks lived in this cabin. Wow. Uh, and I've got a picture of the whole family on the porch of this cabin around 1903. Okay. Uh, and so can you imagine this room, and of course there's a, small, there's a room up above, yeah. 13 people living in this cabin. Wow. That's uh, incredible. Yeah. And uh, it's mostly original. We had to replace some logs, and you can kind of tell the difference. These are original logs, and then you look over there, and it looks has a different kind of okay. look to it. Those are replacement logs. Okay. This section of floor right here, we wanted to preserve everything we could. We had enough boards to do this part of the floor. Um, the upstairs floor is original. Um, the staircase is original, and it's just as solid as the day it was built. And in fact, you see those flowers over there that looks like a kid painted them? Yeah. We even know who painted those flowers. The, we got to meet the, the granddaughter of these two folks, and they remembered this cabin. And they said that in that picture, there's the smallest girl who was about three years old in the picture was the artist, artist of the family. Hmm. And they said that she was probably the little girl that painted those flowers. How about that? So, that's Indeed. Good. What a great story. Just imagine for a moment what it would be like to live with 13 people in this cabin. It's an inspiring story to see that Mr. Ray and his father took such care in preserving this 170-year-old cabin. And others began to notice as well, 
Soon, Mr. Ray was gifted a 200-year-old cabin built by Native Americans. Mr. Ray tells us the story. Now this one is all original. In fact, I even kept the rock that was underneath it. All right, this cabin we've just put up within the last couple of years. Um, and Avondale is a community about three miles west of here, down 11W. And uh, 100 years ago, it was a little resort community. They had a hotel. Um, and uh, so it was all about the mineral oh, water. Oh, mineral water. Yeah, the mineral water. And of course, you know, 100 years ago, everybody thought the mineral water would cure everything that ails you. So people would flock to these areas uh, to vacation, but mainly to drink the water. And this cabin, which was called the Indian cabin, was on that property. And um, they called it the Indian cabin uh, because it was built during the Indian rain. And uh, when, you, when you think it was built? Well, 1818. Uh, we've got postcards of Avondale Springs, and the postcards I have are probably 100 years old. And in these postcards are pictures of this cabin. And on the postcards, it refers to it again as the Indian cabin built in 1818. So it just turned 200 years old. Um, we know it was originally built as a uh, church, um, and then it's been used for about 20 years as a school one-room schoolhouse, and it's been lived in by lots of different folks over the last 200 years. Well, Tennessee became a state, state in 1796, so, so 20, 20 years 20 or years so. after statehood. Wow, yeah. and built by Indians when the area was probably yeah. still wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Cherokee weren't moved out till the 1830s, um, so a lot of history, a lot of history right here. I'm sure glad that I took a chance and pulled into that driveway. I had no idea that I would have the pleasure of meeting Mr. Ray or listening to the incredible story of these two cabins. On behalf of all of us who care about Appalachian history and preserving these buildings, thank you, Mr. Ray. Thanks for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, I hope you'll consider subscribing to this channel, where I share all sorts of Appalachian history and storytelling. Till next time, my friends.